Climate change is commonly thought to be a result of human emissions of CO2, which causes global warming. But CO2 is not the only cause, and not all causes have solely heating effects. CO2 has always had a close relationship with temperature. However, recent human emissions have significantly increased CO2 concentrations, yet temperature has failed to keep up. This shows that climate change is not fully driven by greenhouse gases, and there are lots of forces at work in the Earth's system. One is the fading magnetic field of the Earth. It acts as a shield from much of the radiation and energetic particles in space, but it is getting weaker and has decreased by 10% since measurements started in 1901. This means that more energy from space is reaching Earth. Ocean currents, such as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, has huge effects on temperature. It goes through warm and cool phases and can be seen to dictate the periodic heating and cooling of the Earth. For example, limiting the warming since 1998 to just 0.05 degrees Celsius per decade. It directly impacts on Australia through effects known as El Nino and La Nina, causing droughts and heavy rainfall. Along with the seas, the sun is getting much less active. The current 11-year cycle has been the weakest in over 190 years, and according to experts at NASA, it may lead to a sun which is as weak as the last little ice age, around the 1700s, and could cause extremely cold weather. The causes of climate change are a highly disputed topic, and even today, the science is nowhere near settled. Cyclic climate change is the theory that global warming isn't happening and that the warming we are experiencing is a natural occurrence, part of a cycle where temperatures fluctuate every few thousand years from warming to cooling patterns, causing a change in environments. There has been strong evidence that the world has been caught in a warming trend for the last few thousand years. However, the effects of this warming has been most profound in the last 100 since the dawn of the industrial era. But strangely enough, with all this global warming occurring, it has been discovered that the Earth is now beginning to cool as the polar ice caps have grown significantly over the past year, almost to their original sizes. This is strong evidence that climate change could be cyclical. A factor that leads to cyclical climate change is the Milankovitch cycle. This phenomenon has had a great impact on the warming and cooling patterns of the Earth since the beginning of time. Put simply, the Earth orbits around the Sun and this creates the conditions necessary for life to flourish and also creates seasons and climate variations. The Earth orbits around the Sun in two ways. The first is in a circular orbit. This sort of orbit creates warmer conditions on the planet and is a major cause for the phenomenon known as global warming. The second is an elliptical or an over orbit. This sort of orbit causes the Earth to travel further away from the Sun, creating cooler conditions on the planet, which can be known as a cooling stage or interglacial period. Right now, we are caught in a circular orbit, hence the warmer conditions. This chart shows the effect that the Milankovitch cycle has had on the global temperatures in increments of 100,000 years. A distinct pattern is shown that the Earth's climate oscillates in accordance with the changes in the Milankovitch cycle. This can be relied on as further evidence that climate change is distinctively cyclical. Much evidence points to the fact that climate change is cyclic, but as there is no definitive way for us to figure out if warming patterns are associated with greenhouse gases or this natural cause, the debate will therefore continue to go on. Evidence of our climate changing is already visible in Australia and further effects are being predicted. This will bring about physical, ecological and social impacts to Australia and its people. The decrease in average annual rainfall is predicted to occur. It is projected that by 2030 there will be a 10% decrease in rainfall in southern Australia and as a result droughts will become more harsh and frequent as the years go by. Therefore water security problems will worsen and restrictions will be put in place. With Australia's already sweltering summers, the increase in the number of hot days should come as no surprise. It is predicted that by 2030, the average temperature in Australia will rise by 0.6 to 1.5 degrees Celsius at the world's current emission rate. Livestock production is projected to fall due to their sensitivity to temperature, food and water changes. Furthermore, sea level rising is one of Australia's main concerns with 85% of the Australian population currently residing near or in coastal regions. 
It was reported that between 1870 and 2007, the global average sea level rose by approximately 20 centimetres. By 2050, it is expected that Australian coastal towns and cities will be at a higher risk from flooding and beaches are predicted to erode faster. Due to habitat changes caused by changing climate, species which are already endangered in Australia may become extinct in the future. The prediction of rising sea temperatures are expected to result in the increase of coral bleaching to the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists have predicted that an increase in temperature by 1 to 2 degrees Celsius will cause a 58 to 81 percent of the Great Barrier Reef to be bleached annually. And finally, following the current trends, scientists have predicted the increase of extreme weather events occurring in the future. This includes the increase in tropical cyclone days, the increased risk of bushfires and intensified rainfall. Australia generates 1.5% of global emissions, but on a per capita basis, Australia is the highest emitter of all developed countries. Australia has signed the Kyoto Protocol with a target to reduce its emissions to 5% below 2000 levels by the year 2020. Currently, Australia has imposed a carbon pricing scheme, the idea that the greatest polluters will pay per ton of carbon they release into the atmosphere. This process will make goods and services more expensive and companies will look to reduce their pollution footprint by seeking alternatives such as renewable energy in order to lower their costs. However, as the political climate in Australia has recently changed, the government will soon introduce legislation to repeal the carbon tax and commence implementation of a direct action plan. The direct action plan includes the Emissions Reduction Fund, which is the centrepiece of the government's climate action policy. It will work with other programs under the Clean Air Plan, such as plant 20 million trees and provide rebates to support the installation of 1 million rooftop solar energy systems. The fund will provide incentives for abatement activities and allocate money to projects designed to reduce carbon emissions through a carbon buyback. Australia is said to be on track to meet the Kyoto target and to dispose of the carbon pricing scheme prematurely as a result of political nuisance will affect Australia's commitment to meet this goal. Australia's climate change policy should be less strongly influenced by politics and undertake changes that reflect China's rapid growth in the renewable energies industry, as China is the largest generator in the world with the highest level of investment in the sector. Carbon dioxide is thought to be the only gas which is causing emissions in the atmosphere. However, this is not the case. Carbon dioxide may be the most abundant and most effective greenhouse gas due to its much higher concentration in the atmosphere at 393.31 parts per million. But it is not the only greenhouse gas which has carbon concentration. Other greenhouse gases include methane and nitrous oxide. Due to carbon dioxide being the most abundant gas, it is obviously the most important in reducing emissions, but reducing methane and nitrous oxide are also important. There are many ways to prevent carbon emissions, such as driving less, greener energy and having energy efficient homes. There are too many cars on the road when driving to and from work, and these cars are producing a significant amount of carbon emissions. Ways to reduce these emissions include using public transport, such as trains and buses, cycling and walking. Renewable energy is an essential part of Australia's plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Renewable sources which can be used are solar, wind and wave power. Green power is electricity which comes from these technologies and does the exact same job as the non-renewable resources which we have been using, such as oil, natural gas and coal. Solar power is an option which is much cheaper as well as reducing carbon emissions. Solar panels turn the sun's light into electricity. Solar power generation produces no greenhouse gas emissions or air pollution, which is why it is a great option to use as power generation in order to reduce the total carbon emissions across Australia. Wind energy is generated by converting wind current into other forms of energy using wind turbines. These turbines convert the force of the wind into a torque, which then propels an electric generator to create electricity. This again, not producing any greenhouse gas emissions, is an easy, environmentally friendly option to produce electricity. There are such simple things we can do in our own homes to reduce carbon emissions. Some of these things we don't even think about, and if we take the few extra seconds it takes to do them, we could help our environment immensely in the future, because they will save energy 
and release less carbon emissions. These are turning off lights, turning off the TV at the wall, buying energy efficient globes for all your lights, opening the window or putting on more clothes instead of using the air conditioner, and installing solar panels. These are some of many things which we can do individually at home in order to reduce carbon emissions. By doing all these things, we will be able to live a better and more sustainable future.